All right, good luck. Um, so, yeah, what shall we play? I think I have an interest in trying third file rook. Um, I'm trying to remember, is this the position? Uh, there's too much to remember these days. Um, let's... Let's offer bishop exchange. And so this is at their election they could choose to play that. Um, but also I'm going to put a little pressure on this edge. Um, and hopefully manage to get out of the opening without hanging anything. I think this is a valid fourth file rook move ordering. Normally I would offer to close this diagonal, but here we have something a bit different. Um, I think that's okay. We'll find out momentarily whether or to what extent this is playable. Let's see, is my cursor up here? I've modified my cursor recently. Okay, yes it does. Inspired a bit by Muranaka. Um, yeah, I'm able to modify my cursor to look a little bit more beautiful. Um, all right, this is playable in a sense. Um, I'm not deliberately trying to set a trap or anything, but I am curious what they're planning. So if they push the pawn again, I can take the pawn, and either a bishop exchange occurs, or, um, well, okay, we're not getting there. Now, do I want to play Elmo Castle? I'm curious. Um, no, I want the ability, well, my rook stands in the way of my left silver. I don't want to do anything too crazy right now. Right, so at this point, they've successfully defended their bishop. Um, and I think this is still sensible. So I'm playing a bishop exchange move ordering. Um, I could just exchange directly, but I'm curious if this... I'm always pushing the envelope, and perhaps a bit too much this time. But uh, if I never experiment, I never learn. So, yeah, uh, I will complete half Mino Castle soon. And if they take the bishop, I can take back with the gold general. And perhaps, I don't know where my rook's going to go after that. Um, but yeah, my shape is strange. I've prepared for a fourth file rook opening. Um... But both of us are trying to keep a bit flexible here, and it's causing me a bit of confusion. Alright, so if I complete my half Mino castle, um, I'm not, again, I'm not sure, like, if I push this fourth file pawn, just how much trouble do I get into? I'd like to know. But yeah, I'm trying to play something, I don't know. I haven't really retained, we've gone, done a lot of study on various swinging rook openings, and I'm not doing well at retaining it. I need to play more while studying. Um, so that's how I get into this position, where I'm trying to play some mix of things that I've learned over the last year. So here I'm trying to prevent the advance of the Rook Pawn. And I believe this is an acceptable shape. I 
believe this is this shape is just fine. Um, now, if I open this diagonal to my knight, my knight has nowhere to go. So, um, probably want to put the rook somewhere safer. Oh wait, I could still push uh, my fourth file pawn. I want to have somewhere for my rook to go. No. To that end, I want to kind of take the center, but it seems risky. Um, so if I push the center file pawn, crazy stuff happens right away. I could consider pushing my 7 file pawn, uh, try to provoke this to move, or put my bishop down in a timely fashion, and I don't think there's a way that works, but in theory it could be interesting. I think my rook just belongs, well, not on the fourth file, because I can't open that file, so let's put it on the center file. And then I could push my center file pawn. This also frees my silver to move in theory, but in practice probably not, because it's guarding this square that could fork my golden lance. Um, oh, is my volume quiet? Feels like I've done something to tremendously quiet my volume. Like normally I can hear the pieces snap much louder. Uh, let me quickly check on this. Now my speaker set to the normal speaker level. Um, it's the only way this could be quiet is through this interface itself. All right, let's turn it up a bit. I'm not sure why that feels quiet today. Even now the piece snapping noises. Maybe they made a change to make the piece snapping noises quieter. I wonder. All right, so I mentioned that if I pushed my pawn opening the diagonal to the knight, that would be perilous. They've done the same exact thing that I called perilous, but I think in their case it's okay. Um, because they have generals waiting over here to try to surround my bishop. Um, this is so strange. Well, um, it opens a line to my king, but I could push my third foul pawn and get my knight moving. But the timing of this seems suspect. Um, yeah, let's block the diagonal to my king, and then consider bringing this knight out. I guess I did just allow a bishop promotion, didn't I? Yeah, I just allowed this. Well, that's not great. Um, Could be better. Should have moved the rook first, like I was thinking about, but didn't express aloud. Um, all right. So what do I do now?
Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I guess... Let's chase the bishop. It's okay. It's not the position I wanted to be playing, but we'll play it. Gotta play things how they are. Um... All right, well, we don't have to be afraid of bishop drops anymore, so we can use our silver now. It doesn't have to protect the square. So that aims to attack my castle and try to open it a bit. Um, yeah, let's just continue using the silver. Alright, so they're threatening to allow me to use my knight. Um, I think I'm okay with that. All right, my knight is moving. And I think I'll just continue attacking this bishop. Oh wait, if I bring the silver forward, I lose the silver. All right, I can't be that lax about this. Um, hmm, interesting. I mean, what are they going to do next? This is not where they want the bishop to be. Um, the more pawns I exchange, the more danger I am in here. Uh, yeah, we'll just try to chase down the bishop. In chess, a promoted piece right next to my king would have me very scared. In shogi, maybe not so much. Alright, so they are preventing me from pushing my center pawn. I think that's okay. Uh, let's just continue advancing. I don't think they planned on what to do after exchanging here. Um, I don't think I planned it out either because I didn't plan to lose the material in the first place. Um, 
but I can still make quite a few threats while their horse is such an easy target. So I'm trying to figure out, do I bring one of my two? Well, I don't need to move either of my silvers here. I could if I want to. Um, I might want to because one of them's blocking my rook. Yeah, no, I probably do want to use this silver. All right, so my opponent... Oh, this is clever. Using the tactic that we just went over. <laughs> of course. How could I miss it? Um, yeah, Shogi Harbor just explained how powerful this pawn to Suji is. And now we get to see it firsthand, just how powerful this pawn to Suji is. Well. Okay, then. That's not great. <laughs> well, we can't defend, so we got to attack, right? Um, hmm. Would have been nice to see that in advance. All right, let's just keep advancing. Uh, it's pretty clear where this is retreating to, but um, I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do. If I get the pawn in hand, I could hit this silver. Um, I can't do a whole lot more than that, other than I'm threatening to try to open the center file, which arguably might, maybe... Be dangerous. Um, now they're thinking about pawn takes pawn too. Oh wait a second. I could take with the gold here, and um, yeah, that could be interesting. I don't have to give away my knight. So now I'm threatening to drop the pawn directly in front of their castle. A pawn exchange might have been suitable, but I couldn't find a way to like produce any other attack. So we've been playing this kind of game of chicken here, waiting for each other to do something. Um, so I'm taking action on both sides of the board. I still have the bishop in hand. Normally I'd be happy to have a promoted bishop like this, but I, like this castle just is not very aggressive. It's quite solid. It's difficult to break but it doesn't produce a lot of threats. Or if it's making threats, I just don't see them.
Oh man, I've been <laughs> I've said several times I have this pawn drop. I really don't have this pawn drop. In some fantasy universe where I have not already dropped my pawn, I might have a pawn drop. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh Well, um yeah. It's a good thing I was able to take this and that if they hit my knight, my knight can run away. Because if I didn't have that, I would be in trouble here. <laughs> I'm still threatening to open the center file, but I'm a bit scared at the moment of doing that, because my castle is super disconnected. Um, I might consider bringing my gold one closer to the king to connect the generals, at least. But yeah, mostly I'm just waiting to see, other than using this promoted bishop, what's their threat. It's true, this pawn drop in front of the knight is usually quite strong, but here my knight's able to run away. So we're just going to complete this silver crown without the crown. Silver castle. All right. Um, now, do I retreat or do I push? If they take this, I take... I have nothing. Yeah, let's retreat. <laughs> Maybe I'm producing gold crown castle if my gold goes in front, which, I mean, that's a terrible shape. I should not consider that any further. It's really not worth it. All right. Um... Hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's clever. Well, how clever is it? How clever is this? I mean, I have to do this, right? I expected them to lead up uh, with a silver advance and that maybe I'd have some trick somewhere. Um. I didn't see one, but I was hoping that, like, when the silver advanced, that would somehow open a hole and my bishop drop could be useful somewhere. But I don't see a useful bishop drop. Also, exchanging gold for silver is not the end of the world if I'm forced to do that. Although this bishop is arguably not happy. Maybe it is happy, maybe it's not, but um, it's a bit tricky for either of us to find a constructive move at this point. I might want to push the pawn at, well, pushing this exposes my knight. Might not want to do that. Um, all right, I can retreat here. Since my pawn and knight defend the head very well. Okay. But this opens up a place for my bishop to drop. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Also, even if they win this pawn, it's not the end of the world. Um, I mean, they... I'm not even sure what their threat is here. Maybe they want to exchange knights so that they can exchange other pieces. 
Maybe that's their idea. Um, I have no idea what to do. Oh, I can strike the silver right away. This is probably the best I can manage here. And this allows them to promote their rook if they give me a silver. Um, I don't think they're giving me a silver general, so... Yeah, I don't know how this will play out. I am susceptible to a silver fork if we exchange silver. Well, no, they're not playing here either because knight takes. I don't need to exchange off my silver general. So they just have a cramped position. Also, I have a fork. This king and pawn are now aligned. So I could just simply snap this. Um, See, so if silver takes gold... To, oh, if they take here, that's a promotion. But then I can pin the rook. Or I could do the fork, because the gold protects the square. Um, then they get a bishop, which they can immediately promote, but then I could promote my rook. Yeah. That's... I am simply winning here. Unless they have, like, some miracle attack, I just got a rook. Um. Measure once, cut twice, or measure twice, cut once, I can't remember. Shogi tactics are just really challenging. They'll surface anywhere when you least expect them. Um, Let's keep the rook far from the king, unless they bring the knight this way. We've entered Byoyomi, but my position's awesome. Um, so I just need to be cautious. I guess lining up my king and my rook is not very smart. But I want to exchange two pieces for... Or one piece for two pieces and continue attacking here. This looks like a very fast attack. I should pause to think before I play. Especially if I criticize my opponent for the same. But 
This position just looks so overwhelmingly strong. Um, oh, they finally moved this. I was wondering if they were going to do that ever. Um, so the pro uh, I was going to say the problem here is I have a silver drop and a knight drop. But then I start running out of pieces to drop to attack with. Um, hmm. I want to both to get this bishop away from my king. Um... And I want another piece closer to their king. At present, they have no way of getting a knight, so I'm open to having this spot exposed. Right. The problem with that is that now I can drop the knight and then the silver and just continue pushing them back row by row. Um, Yes, yeah, so this all of my light pieces are Oh, wait. Is this actually trapping their bishop? I didn't even expect that outcome, but um yeah, if the silver retreats, then this bishop or the silver drop actually ensnares their bishop. Yeah, so finally my opponents like enough of this. It's their turn to attack. And it is. Um it can't always be my turn. Um, get taken here. They get a silver general. Uh, well, knights are quite useful to me in this position. So, yeah, I'm considering taking this and then dropping another knight and continuing to take here over and over until they move their defensive knight out. Once the defensive knight is moved, um, it becomes easier to strike the castle. Actually, yeah, once the knight is moved, I can drop a knight here. And then if they move this gold, uh, I take the other gold. And I'm winning. Surely I'm somehow winning material here. I'm playing this game without my rook, basically. My rook's just... well, it's defending the pawn. That's kind of important here. Okay, okay, so... Hmm. Didn't expect that. That's resourceful, yeah. I guess they're trying to protect their bishop. Um. I could defend my knight. No, I think this is the correct way for me to proceed. I could have defended my knight, but then the more pieces I push away from my king, the more dubious my king position is. I need to do something... well, 
each exchange I make here has some risk. Um, if they drop a silver, I can repeat this tactic with, the, well, I can Sanjido. put a knight here instead. No, the knight here allows silver takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, hitting my silver, which is kind of hard to meet. So, yeah, I'll see if I can convince them to move this silver away. And if I can, then I can drop my next silver right on the king's head. Um, but yeah, this gold is locked in place, defending the other gold. If I tried to attack on the back row, well, maybe that could have worked. But this attack approach looked correct to me. They might have to block on this rank with a knight at some point, or some blocking piece if they can manage to get one. Yeah. That's just as I was thinking, they might elect to block on this rank because everything else looks so dangerous. Um, but I can harass the knight there. Well, harassing the knight's not smart. <sighs> Where's my smart move? Sanjubyo. All right, the knight's in my way. Okay, let's break up their castle. The only move that saves this bishop is gold takes. And they really don't want to play gold takes here because that splits their castle. Right, if they play this, now I just trap the bishop. Kapow. Yeah, ever since the King Rook Fork, this game has been a bit one-sided. Um, so I was fortunate to have that fork. Yeah, it's a very, very powerful fork. Right, so they have to counterattack. There's no question there. Um, yeah, I'm slightly nervous, to be honest. I shouldn't be, but I am. Maybe I should be. Maybe there's something to be nervous about. Uh, I saw this gold flicker. I have some idea what my opponent is planning. Um, perhaps bringing my king toward the gold is a bit reckless. I'm finding it difficult to read out variations. We've been in Bioyomi for about 40 moves. Or it feels that way anyhow. Um, 
Right, so if I exchange my silver, I'm asking for a little bit of trouble. I'm not sure if a little bit is correct, but there is at least some trouble involved there. Um, okay, I have to defend my king. I mean, a pro would read out, is there some checkmate if I, like, play the rook up? I'm not quite pro just yet, so uh, I cut myself a little bit of slack for freaking out here. Yeah, so they do take the silver, as expected. Um, I don't have to take the bishop. I could take the gold here instead. But then they take this pawn and my attack dissolves, so... That's not smart. Yeah, we're taking this bishop. And I triple checked that I'm not made it here, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if somehow I missed something. Um, Check. So we just run. And hopefully I've read this out correctly that I survive. Gold takes knight, silver takes gold. And I think I'm fine. Alternatively, I could take this knight and take this gold and just keep taking things until they give up. Um, but that's a bit risky. I don't want all these pieces right next to my king. Oh, also, I missed that there's a gold fork of my silver and king at the end of this, so potentially as I'm picking up this knight with my king. Yeah, that is scary. So the safest... Oh! Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there's forks everywhere here. Hmm. <laughs> Presently, that knight is the most annoying piece. So I'm going to remove the knight. And I understand my opponent has two gold generals, but I think I can survive that. Uh, except my rook gets trapped. Well, uh, there is no such thing as a safe move in this game. You have to play actively. But yeah, that knight combined with me eventually giving up a gold, either to the knight or to the silver, it's too risky. Maybe better was Rook takes silver and then taking the knight. But I doubt it. Alright, we're in check. Let's get out of check. And I think I've covered lots of paths toward my king. Maybe there's some path that I've failed to account for. Um... Oh well, no, they could play a gold here to hit this silver and threaten to move closer to my king. Uh, to which I could just retreat this silver. 
Them approaching my king with just two pieces is not enough to sustain an attack. Also, I could push this pawn. Well, then... Yeah, that doesn't work. That does not work at all. Oh, they could also just push directly. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Alright, my turn to attack? I think it's my turn. Um, I don't have... I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have ideas, but... I think we take here. Try to provoke king takes. Actually, now I can move the rook back. Yeah, rook back looks... Well, it doesn't mate. It does not mate. Sometimes... Uh... I want to use this rook. I forgot that moving it allows me to promote it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, and eventually I'll do it over toward the king to promote it. And I'm like, wait, wait, okay, I can actually promote it right now. Oh, is that how this game works? Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Um... But yeah, if this inspires them to place a gold general on their back row, then I'm, I'm doing okay in that case. I'm guessing they'll almost certainly take my silver here, and I will try to checkmate them. I saw silver drop, king here, bishop drop, king takes silver, bishop takes gold, bishop promotes, discovered check. And that's the point at which I realized, yeah, I'm okay with this. Um, yeah, so they place uh, this in defense, like I thought they might. Um, so then we're just not going to hang this silver. And just be super, super ultra careful not to Nifu, because that would be sad. This would be a sad position to Nifu in. Now, incidentally, it seems I've trapped their gold general. No, oh, I'm sorry, the gold can escape this direction. Um, I have not yet trapped it, but it's almost trapped. Okay, this is a free pawn. Um, I should just take this, yeah? I guess this allows them in the future to place more stuff. Check. It took me 30-something seconds to see that check. Um, but it looks like a good check, so time well spent, I assume. Yeah, I kept trying to find other useful night drops and couldn't find them. But this night drop looks useful for sure. Thank 
I thought this could happen. Um. All right, they have nothing in hand to block this check with. So they could either block with their general that's already on the board, splitting their castle at its most vulnerable point. They could block with this general, I guess. I didn't see that. Um, or they could do king takes knight, which I thought was going to happen, uh, but didn't happen. All right. Um, Man, if I were a pro, this is the position where I'd find the awesome mate. Oh, wait. Um, bishop takes gold, and then bishop takes other gold. And yeah, this is mate. That works. Oh, did I miss like a really simple mate if I invert the move order? Bishop takes here first. All right. Thanks for the game. Whew, that was an adventure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got the job done. Perhaps there was a smarter mate at the end. Um, okay, yeah, this might have been a safer move. Uh, hmm. Hmm. That makes sense. Wow, we seem to have attract attracted quite the crowd. That's pretty funny. Everybody liked this game, I think. Uh, uh, all right, so the chat noises are a bit noisy. Let's turn that down a touch. Sorry about the loud chat noises. Um, uh, yes, yeah, fortunate to be able to escape that here. Um, so yeah. This position. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was fortunate. Uh, my opponent also missed that. Gold takes two four. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, when the opponent's back is to the wall, they will find something. <laughs> um, hmm. uh, 
wonder how I stop that. Because that pawn wedge looks really painful. Um... I wonder, can I do this? And just say, you know what, I don't want to defend anymore. Uh, feels like there should be something here. I don't know if I can zoom in once more without breaking the interface, so that's why I left it zoomed out this much. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, they've got this fork. Yeah, it's true that night takes definitely involves some risk. Um, and since I don't see how to use the bishop on the long diagonal, maybe I can use it on this shorter diagonal. Um, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. What's the follow-up? Or is it just that you have the bishop in hand and you're satisfied with that? Because that might make sense, too. I can drop a pawn right here, <laughs> um, returning the favor in a sense, but my castle is... I mean, both of us have interesting uh, positions. My gold is off a of no-man's land. My king is... yeah, everything I have is, like, very vulnerable. Um, hmm. I want to use my rook. Okay, what's this now? It's well motivated, it's just I'm not sure if this works. I'm very interested in getting my rook somehow into play. Um, so it looks to me like maybe I have something here. Maybe it's hard to say. <sighs> yeah. There's a lot going on in this position. Uh... Yeah. I mean, since my back is to the wall and a lot of that, it's kind of easier to find my defensive moves. Um, but yeah, allowing this bishop drop was reckless of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was fortunate to be able to chase around their horse a bit. Um... Hmm. Oh, well, that's an interesting point. Um. Hmm. What does this do? It 
it's a little tricky for me to find a, a an attacking move for them. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Right, so if we exchange here, I get a silver in hand, and I still have the bishop in hand. Um, yeah, that looks really difficult for them to defend. So he read that out. Um, yeah. Oh, he's right. Yeah, this pawn move, unfortunately, just loses a tempo trying to hold on to that diagonal. Uh, oh, yes, I saw this during the game. Um, a move too late, but I did see it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I think, the right way to continue. Although the like it's difficult for them to defend even still. Hmm. Okay, yeah, they, I guess he's right. That pawn drop is required here. And useful. Yeah. Oh. Ha. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> uh, what timing. <laughs> ah, this is clever. Ah. Oops. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Hmm. Wow, okay, so, yeah, I suppose maybe they're still better here somehow. Just because they have a castle, and I don't. Yeah, that was kind of awkward to meet. Um... Yeah, smashing or breaking into their castle there would be very difficult. Um, so at least through that particular move order, I'm busted. Here, I was fortunate to have both of those gold escape moves. Yeah. <laughs> And then from here, I just rode this uh, advantage to the end game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so they have to consider something like that. And now what? Uh, so I need to activate my pieces. Um... I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. It puts pressure on their position for sure. But, oh wait. Um. Hmm. 
So I'm threatening to promote the bishop. Yeah, so they do this. And I guess this is where we go. Yeah. Oops. Oops, I need to take this way. Um, otherwise, I'm losing my knight for nothing. And yeah, here they've got some initiative still. Um, it's impressive. Uh, what do we do now? Something like this, I guess. Still looks very difficult for Gota here. Um, but I don't know that there's anything better to do. At this point, they've committed to this very solid, compact castle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, at this position, there's just not much of an escape. <laughs> the, the main reason uh, my goal twice escaped is because I was forced to find the correct moves. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, they played well defending this difficult position, but like after they lost the rook, there was just no way out. So, yeah. Not sure where to go from there, other than like, obviously they found a lot of really resourceful moves, but my attacking power was just way too much at the end there. Um, yeah, what else do we say? I mean, it's a great pawn to Suji. They just had a temporary blind spot, and I pounced on it. Um, uh, I guess some of my defense at the end might have been inaccurate, but I don't know. Like, where he's starting to build up an attack again. Um, but, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I remember right, I entered Yoyomi first. This is a nice trap. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. In hindsight, uh, maybe I had a better attack. Uh, if I could just, like, somehow play uh, 
Yeah, so this is perhaps not the right square for my king. Um, and perhaps that's not a good square for this either. I don't know. Because, like, if I could draw their king into the corner and play silver takes pawn, man, I've got a lot of threats to take gold generals and pin stuff on the back rank. And yeah. Yeah, well... Hmm. <laughs> um, but no, they played the quite reasonable moves. Um, yeah, oh, right. During the game, I was trying to read that. Um, And taking the knight was important, I think. Uh, although there might have been some other way to survive, but it was messy at best. And probably not surviving for quite long. Um, yeah, this is a good resourceful move at this point. It's just it didn't work on me. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've been afraid. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot there was a pawn there. So they can't drop a pawn right in front of my king, so this is actually playable. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. So I don't have to go about my super convoluted attack. Uh, yeah, I took the long path, didn't I? And it, perhaps at some point I should have played Rook 8 1 Promote, but um, ended up not being necessary. Wow. Well, yeah, there's... Yeah, if I give you a gold general, this is not good for me. Gotta watch for that. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Definitely, there's always some chance that I'll miss a thing. Um, can't completely discount that. Um, yeah, and then their bishop takes silver was clever, because this allowed them to continue the attack a bit longer, but, um, yeah, I found some accurate moves. And here I just said enough of that, let's just go for attempted mate. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't looking at that. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, hmm. This looks a bit tricky. Oh, like, yeah, we gotta follow the latest position with, uh, like, well, okay. Yeah, apparently, I'm, well, this works. Ish. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I was looking at, like, a silver drop on uh, 2-1. Um, just, 
this looked interesting to me. Um, oh, do they really escape here? If so, that's pretty amazing. Um, I mean, this has to mate, right? Where's the mate? Um, yeah, and then if the king goes out, it's gold on the head. Yep. It's a lot of variations, but yeah, this certainly seems to work. We lead the attack with the light pieces. That way, if we need a heavy piece later, or rather we play the heavy piece only when we see that there's a mate. Otherwise, we use the lightest pieces first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Got so much firepower here. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I debated, yeah, that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, they had to play this golden defense, and at which point I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna win simply now. And not like anything over on my king. There might have been some awesome checkmate that I missed here, but probably in Bioyomi I would struggle to find it. Um... Okay, yeah, that makes some sense. Uh, so here... Did I have anything planned? Not necessarily. Guess let's back up. Oh, okay. That's kind of clever. Um, Right, so we got the triple gold formation. Um, yeah, this attack ain't slowing down for no one. Although they have a lot of defensive moves. Maybe I am slowing it down with such a night drop. Hmm. I hadn't thought much about that. Guess we'll take this knight. Yeah, it's difficult to continue the attack, but I'll keep going somehow. Um, yeah, that's the right one, otherwise I use my knight to... Well, I can use my knight either way here. Um, I feel like I've missed something. <laughs> yeah, it's quite resourceful. They've got a pawn again. You never know what they could do with the pawn. Um, I 
I don't know, is this fine? Maybe this is wrong. Hmm. Mm, but, yeah, I have chances, I just don't know. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, this is probably it. Yeah, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. Now you've got two pawns, but I might be better there. Um... Yeah, I <laughs> mean, that's not an easy position. That's interesting. Um, this golden front is pinned. So, yep. There's not a whole lot that could be done without an attack. Um, uh, wow. Alright. Yeah. I guess I agree with their assessment that, like, uh, Gota's pretty doomed here. It's just a question of when and where the knockout blow is. Not if there's one, but when and where there's one. Yeah, some engine would tell you exactly where the move is here. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> something like this, I guess. Yeah, they've got to block that. Um, and then we bring the king forward. Because, like, they're not going to just abandon this pawn they just placed. So, um, just keep inviting the king forward one step at a time. Yeah. And then we take a vertical piece and see what they do. I mean, what are they going to do with four pawns? I don't know. Um... But yeah, yep, there's no escape in that. I don't even see it, but like, that's gotta be mate, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, after the fork, they had a very, very difficult position. They did play some defensive moves that were great here. My own reaction to their knight drop check was perhaps wrong. Probably I should have done king 2-9 instead of king 3-9. Just to get my king oh, as far from their gold as possible. Uh, yeah, that was a very good opening. So I missed something there. I'm not really sure what. Um, 
<sighs> um. Um. Uh, so let's see, where am I? Uh, which move number is this? I guess, uh... Look, five, nine, um... So, this is a bit tricky. Um, yeah, I don't really know what it is I should be playing. Um, allowing the bishop to promote uh, led to a really difficult position for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. Let's find something. So I don't know. It's like this or this or yeah. And then from here, am I able to do this? Um. It's still spooky because like my entire second rank is. Um, exposed. I'm trying to block this diagonal just for the worst case where eventually knights and bishops and other pieces will approach my king. I want to put that off as long as possible. I'm not really sure what my opponent's doing. So, yeah, this makes some sense. Um... Okay, they could play this too. Um, yeah, there's a lot to consider. Yeah, this is kind of cool too. So what's up here, I wonder? Um... Oh, I'm just forked. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of uh, interesting. So I actually do get some pressure here, which is kind of nice. Pardon my noise. Um, yeah, I was trying to find some way to attack on that side. Right. Because otherwise, I've got like this kind of work. Um, yeah. Oh, well, don't you have this here? Um, okay, yeah, I guess it takes a while for them to activate everything here, but still. Still, I like their position a lot. I'm not sure I could put it to words why I like it so much. Um...
guess it'll take you a while, but um, yeah, it's not super easy for me here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I have to do something crazy. Uh, it's hard to say. Oh. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, we've got to run. It's going to be a fair deal of running here, isn't there? I mean, my gold has basically nowhere to run after this, but I don't... Exchanging this defensive silver for the gold doesn't look that safe, but maybe it's fine. Yeah, actually, what am I talking about? I have no attack here. Yeah, so I'm just inviting pain. Uh, well, I mean, if you put it that way, yeah, here I have something, um, but, like, what about just this directly? <laughs> Probably that's risky. You're giving me a pawn and a tempo, but, like, that, this, I mean... I'm out of ideas here. I just, yeah, I have to take it. And... Don't think there's a whole lot going on. My own bishop isn't going very far. Yeah. So yeah, their position is just clearly superior here. Because uh, it will take me a very long time to begin attacking. As they note, my silver is far from their king or far from the center. And my bishop is no longer in hand, so I can't really choose where to drop it because it's been dropped. Um, so I wonder... Yeah, so this... Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to find some sacrifice. Uh, trying to find some kind of sacrifice here, because there's... Nah, I don't know that I can find one. So yeah, we have to go back and defend this, and maybe that's not right here. Um, yeah, I guess I just have to run. Yeah. And then I guess you just build up a castle or something, and uh, I don't know something. Yeah. Yep. So I guess this other rook move, um, seems to refute work for eight um let's find something else then uh so oh i hadn't even really thought much about this but how about that hmm that's kind of interesting just trying to prevent their knight from moving trying to prevent their silver from activating this feels right. Is it right? Who knows, but um, yeah, it's still going to take me forever to start attacking.
Yes, so they do that, and I don't know. It's not easy for me to find moves, that's for sure. Um, the idea of like this, which is kind of sad, but um, I mean, this gold is in the wrong spot for sure. Also, I don't know how I'm ever going to find time for these moves because this pawn advance is looming. Um, but yeah, keeping the knight locked in the corner seems interesting. And I don't know how these... Well, either they focus on defense or they find some useful rapid attack here. It would not surprise me if I've completely missed some rapid attack because I tend not to be the greatest at finding them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this. I just, this is tricky for me. Um, Yeah, so that's the natural response. And then I want to find some move here. Yeah, it's not easy to find a move. Um, I don't know, is this playable? I wonder if that's wrong. So the idea is I want to try to fork the rook and the knight, but maybe this is just completely incorrect. Hmm. I don't know. These openings are tricky. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there is that, but then there's this. So, this is not so easy. Right, I could do this. That's true. Uh, okay, yeah, you could do there, too. That might be easier. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Cause then there's this, and I just sack the bishop. I don't know. And we take the bishop. We take this. Looks pretty crazy, but maybe it's fine. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. That crushes my attack. It's very hard for me to continue after a move like this. I mean, I guess I could try that, but... Um, hmm. Ah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks very good for Gota. Yeah. So, yeah, this back here. Can't do this pawn drop. So maybe this one instead. Uh...
Hmm. So, yeah, my whole idea of trying to activate my silver runs into this problem. Um... So maybe we don't do that just yet. Maybe we play this back to cover uh, this knight. Oh, well, okay. Um, no, let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> can't run forever, so, uh, eventually I've got to make some kind of play somewhere, somehow. Okay, yeah, that looks difficult for me. Um, oh, yeah, actually, this uh, just gets shut out. I have no way to continue attacking after this. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, losing the rook here is no good. Um, man, that's a tough position. Hmm. Oh, well, what can you do? It's just hard to find a good move. I had to play the silver the way I did because of the potential bishop drop on 8-8. Uh, um, like, unless I were to put my own bishop on 8-8, which looks kind of crazy. Well, maybe it's playable. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Looks messy. Yeah. Mm. And then play something like this and this and this and I don't know. Um Maybe something like this. Looks tricky. But, uh, but yeah, if I play like this first, then there's this drop. Yeah. Well, I wonder, actually, can I do... No. Rook over is not as smart as it looks. Yeah. I think it's some bishop exchange shape. I'm not really sure. Probably all of our audience members could tell us, if only they could speak. Um, yeah, we seem to have attracted multiple guests from Japan who found this game quite exciting. Perhaps due to the choice of opening. Um, I'm always trying to do something a little new or different, so this definitely... Uh, what's the metaphor? Fits the bill? What's the bill? Fits? Somehow? Yeah, I don't know. But, um, 
this seemed to provide what we needed uh, in terms of an interesting game. Um, I don't really know what else I could have done here. Um, because if I'm not going to allow this, then I need to like play that or something. Uh, maybe there's even something like this, I wonder. Oh, wait, this is not smart. Um, well, no, maybe it is. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That looks kind of fun, though. Uh, well, hang on. So I played Silver 3 8. Maybe this is necessary, but then this is loose. Mm. Oh well. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, sorry if I was babbling a bit toward the end there. Um, it's just these, this is how we kind of communicate. Um, so, oh, we have one more comment. I was going to full screen the board, but, um, yeah. I have a nice golden week. That's right, it is golden week in Japan. So this is the week between years, or rather, it's a week where eight holidays are celebrated, I believe. Um, yeah, this is quite the mating attack. Oh, I could show off one other thing, which is kind of inconsequential. But um, yeah, back here where they did the night drop, I probably should just drop back here. Uh, I'll leave this as an exercise to the reader to figure out what the best retreating move or advancing move even might be. But probably King Retreat is safest. But yeah. Um, also, I was curious here. Um, so I play this Bishop Takes, and that did checkmate. Um, but what if I do this one instead? And they take, and we take here? That's checkmate, right? Oh, wait, they take here, and there we go. No. No. Sorry. Um, play this. And if the king moves over, then we have mate here. Oh, wait, that's... I forgot. All right, anyway, if they go back this direction... We've mate on the other side somehow. But we don't take here. We just place a general. Yeah, so, and then there's like this. Um, so as long as you don't mate with the pawn, it's okay. There's probably some more efficient way about all of this, uh, but uh, yeah. So this other move order looks just fine. I checked here first, and then there. Oh, maybe I did pick the better mate. What about this? I mean, my opponent and I both read this out after the game. But, um... It's this simple, isn't it? Yeah, this covers everything. Alright, so... I mean, toward the end, I had to trust my intuition a little bit. You don't see this particular box very often. But, yeah, uh, it was a very well-defended game. Um, there were chances for both players. Uh, where did things start to get lopsided? This was a tough decision. It was a good decision, but still a tough one. Um, yeah, if I had another gold in hand, this would be a lot easier, but I don't. Is there some better way to attack here? 
that gets me in less danger, maybe so. Uh, this threat here ultimately did work out in the game, but this might have been easier. And the reason I didn't play that is because of this move, but um, there's probably something I can do here. Hang on, before we throw that in, let's throw these moves in, because then the knight is placed, and this silver cannot retreat. And now if they do this, now we can take like this. This is probably the better way to attack. Even though neither of my pieces directly break into the castle. Um, yeah, this looks better. Uh, what concerned me was this running away, but, um, I think I'm fine. Wait, why am I playing a silver? It'd be lighter if I could to attack with this. I just can't. Um, it'd be lighter to use my rook that's already on the board than try to use a new attacking piece. Again, that's, well... Not so clear. I mean, what I did worked, but um, okay, exchanging my knight seems unnecessary. Wait, why did I place a knight defending a knight? This indicates that I don't know how to attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the correct move is probably something like this. Yeah. There we go. I mean, yeah, they still have this knight drop on my king's head, which is really unpleasant. Uh, I could also just take a move to play something like that. Or pull this back. Um, yeah, why didn't I do this? Like, what are they going to do to me that I'm so afraid of? I've seen this. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I mean, we got the job done. This knight drop was misguided. They need to keep the knight. They need to keep that for a mating attack, unless this is just devastating. I don't think it is. Um, why did I play this again? I don't know. But anyway, we had an exciting game. Uh, I'm questioning a lot of things thereafter, but... Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Hopefully there were some instructive moments. Our opponent played very well, minus falling. Yeah, I could comment once last time about the thing that we just blitzed into during the game. Like I said, I'm not trying to trap him, but in some sense, like this is my chess nature just coming out, where I blitz out a few moves, and okay, I'm not trying to trap him, but he definitely should not have played the silver move. Because um, this just loses the silver. And then once he lost the silver, he has to pause and reconsider. Um, and it's fine to exchange knights. But yeah, losing the rook here uh, is not the correct move. Again, I'm not trying to bully him or anything at this point. It's just, in fact, by playing so quickly, I kind of give away my intention. Which is that you better watch out or I'm going to do this. Um, so that's why I played so quickly, is to try to like indicate, yes, I've thought about this. Um, it kind of as a courtesy to the opponent. Even if... Uh, well, so a tournament player for chess, somebody who's lost hundreds of tournament games in chess, where a tournament game is a game like over the board, you've driven or otherwise traveled some distance to play in this thing. You've paid an entry fee. You've had to play against kids that are like way younger than you, and you've had to play against other people that um, just play tricky openings, and like you, you've had to play through all these challenging games. And you've had plenty of very painful losses in your memory. Um, and if you have this kind of background, then you'll know from previous tournament experience, like, you've rushed a move. 
Um, so yeah, when I'm rushing these moves here, it's indicating, hey, you really need to stop and think about this. Um, but that's not how it played out. Um, uh, especially with, uh, now there's the other thing, it's like with chess, you don't have the Bioyomi clock, usually. Even though I've been suggesting, um, for a couple of years, not very long, but I've been suggesting that chess needs a Bioyomi clock. It deals with a lot of the time pressure concerns that top players and other players uh, all have. It's so by allowing each player to have a fixed time per move toward the end of the game, um, while still allowing them to budget some of their time up front, I think this is an excellent combination that allows players to not lose on time, but also to try to budget their time but understand they can't budget everything and that the timekeeper will take control of time as the game uh, nears its end. I think it solved quite a few problems with players losing on time or players playing quickly to try to gain an advantage on the clock. When Bioyomi gives you the minimal advantage on the clock but still allows you to have some extra time per move toward the end. Um, but also allows you some control of your clock as opposed to just fixed time per move, like saying 10 seconds every move the entire game. That's something different. Yeah, Chronos definitely have Bioyomi feature. Uh, unfortunately, like, I've used Chronos before. Uh, they're excellent clocks. This is not sponsored. Um, the manual is not too hard to read clock itself is not too hard to learn how to operate if you can get a hold of a manual, which typically you can. It's also available online. Um, but yeah, it's a very good clock. Almost every Kronos that I've seen has the Bioyomi feature built in, along with tons of other game settings. And nowhere in the book, though, does it ex Maybe it does explain that Bioyomi means countdown, but it doesn't really dawn on a player just how relevant this is. Um, but yeah, it's a very good game clock, and it's a good game mode. And I wish that all official clocks would support this mode, and I wish further that more tournaments would move into this game mode, even if it does not favor tournament organizers. Uh, tournament organizers want a game, uh, want the tournament to be done in a day or in a weekend, or whatever period of time. They want to know how quickly the games are going to end. Um, Bioyomi has that disadvantage that it doesn't really fit into the U.S. tournament format at all. But I think it, organizations and such really need to start embracing it. Um, and it's somewhat disheartening to see... Um, I don't know, with Shogi, it's starting to trend the other way, where... Uh, there are some Blitz games going on. Um, I mean, they have like Blitz and Bioyomi, and that, I guess that's kind of exciting in a way. But yeah, I think Bioyomi is definitely absolutely essential, and I argued as much for Lee Shogi, and we got it. And I'm thankful Lee Shogi has Bioyomi, and it's the most popular feature, or the most popular time control. Even though you can play increment, or you can play without it, but... Um, yeah, so uh, it can also generate the Fisher random starting positions. Like, yeah, the manual is like 60 pages or something. I've read it. It's great. Um, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, thanks to my opponent, Foradun, here for a very exciting game.